Hi everyone, this is Kenzie. I've done this part about a good three times, and every time something changed. At first I was getting feedback from my Reddit post on the Gundam Breaker 3 subreddit, and I was prepared to give my thanks. Then this video blew up slightly, and I was ready to give even more thanks. Then I broke 100 subscribers. You all are so freaking amazing. The only thing I can do in return is give you all what you want. A freaking awesome Gundam Breaker 3 video. So if you watched the last video, you know what you're getting into here. In the last video, I reviewed New Gundam Breaker, and while I feel that New Gundam Breaker is, while painfully average, a fun game in its own right, I hear all too much about how Gundam Breaker 3 blows it out of the water. So here we go. This is my review on Gundam Breaker 3 Break Edition. Upon starting the game for the first time, you have to do a lot of reading. And by reading, I mean... Shut the fuck up. Fuck up. After all of that, the game immediately threw me into the story. You play a competitor in somewhat of a Gundam Grand Prix, where you have to make the Gunpla that will rival the rest. That premise immediately stuck out to me more than New Gundam Breaker. Games like Yu-Gi-Oh! Beginning of Destiny, Super Dragon Ball Heroes, and now Gundam Breaker 3 all deal with you playing the game within the game, while not being in the universe of the game itself. And I have a soft spot for games like that, so I immediately felt at home, honestly. The main character was pretty likable, and the characters you meet on your journey to being the best team definitely stick out more than the three girls you're forced to be around in New Gundam Breaker. The cast constantly switched up and added to the experience as well, especially the SD Gundam Knight that joins your party. And yes, while you are a faceless protagonist, at least you get to see yourself in the hub world so that helps to allow you to identify with your pilot more than in New Gundam Breaker, which showed you no one. Overall, the game's introduction did much better than New Gundam Breakers, but not everything is peaches and cream. The intro also throws you straight into the gameplay with a pre-made GM3. <laughs> While the intro is well done for those who like hack and slash gameplay, if you don't even like it, or Gundam for that matter, then you most likely will get bored pretty fast. Here lies the main difference I noticed early on in Gundam Breaker 3. The mission structure is non-existent. In New Gundam Breaker, the game gives you tasks to do during the mission that can at least keep you busy, but in Gundam Breaker 3, more often than not, you will mainly just be beating the shit out of Gunpla until you reach the final boss of the mission, then that's it. Like I said, I like that gameplay loop, but if you don't like hack and slash games, or beat em ups for that matter, which this game is closer to, you will most likely not enjoy yourself as much as someone else who does. But that's fine, because that initial intro, and I mean this lovingly, is arguably the worst part of the game. Because as soon as you finish that, you can customize your Gunpla. And that's when Gundam Breaker 3 begins to earn its reputation, and when New Gundam Breaker starts to show its ass. Remember when I said that you should most definitely get New Gundam Breaker for its customization alone, unless you have access to the Japanese series? Well, now I have access to it. New Gundam Breaker is a bit biter. Uh, can I copy your homework head ass? Everything that New Gundam Breaker gives you is accessible from Gundam Breaker 3 and has way more to give you. All of the same options are here and available right after the intro tutorial level. The only thing you don't get that New Gundam Breaker gives you is customization of your inner frame. But you can ignore that your entire time playing and it's barely noticeable. You know what else is gimped in New Gundam Breaker? Builder's parts. I forgot to mention this in the last video, thanks Zero Reverse R1 on Reddit for telling me this, but Builder's Parts in New Gundam Breaker allowed you to add different stats to your Gunpla while taking away others. For example, putting a horn on your Gunpla can give you more melee damage while taking away range damage. These parts can be anything from missile pods or a huge ass sword. Neither of these you can actually use. All of these things you pile onto your Gunpla in New Gundam Breaker are unable to be used. While in Gundam Breaker 3, you can use every builder part you put on, which is just better in every way. You put on a builder's part and boom, you can equip the skill that it gives you. If you equip a hand grenade, you can use it. 
a hyper beam, you can use it. Some builder's parts give you access to an entire other set of combo attacks that you can do. This game is so fully loaded with options to customize your gunpla with that I was dumbfounded at how much New Gundam Breaker brought over and fucked with for no reason. New Gundam Breaker on its own is a good customization system, but compared to Gundam Breaker 3, it loses. Not terribly, but it is still a loss. Okay, now one place where the comparison gets a little harder to determine the winner in is the graphics, and honestly, I don't know. Gundam Breaker 3 obviously does a better job with its action and its polish is unbelievably higher than New Gundam Breakers, but in terms of just sheer looks, I can't say that Gundam Breaker 3 looks strictly better. They are both good looking in different ways. Like I mentioned in the previous video, New Gundam Breaker is a more toy-like portrayal, with the smoothness of the gunpla and the simple stylization of the environments, while Gundam Breaker 3 aims for a more realistic portrayal of gunpla. The models look very real, but not lifelike realism, but rather a gritty imitation of realism. One example I can turn to is the metallic setting for the colors in both games. All of the color options are the same in both games, almost identical actually. And the metallic setting allows you to make your gunpla all shiny and whatnot. But in New Gundam Breaker, the metallics actually look easier on the eyes due to the simplicity of it. But in Gundam Breaker 3, the metallics look very detailed. Being able to see all of the realistic reflection was also appealing too. Overall, both games look high quality, but they both accomplish different goals in that aspect. If I had to choose one that I like more, Gundam Breaker 3 by a long shot. Yeah, New Gundam Breaker nails the look it was going for, but Gundam Breaker 3 is older and will age more gracefully than New Gundam Breaker ever will. This is also true in the gameplay as well, and wow. Gundam Breaker 3 puts this thing down, flips it, and reverses it. Is this And wow. New Gundam Breaker is a bunch of bull. Gundam Breaker 3, in terms of gameplay, feels like it was the one that was supposed to be the complete overhaul, but it wasn't. This game came out first. This game feels like it was made with life or death in the balance. This game plays amazingly. From the moment I started playing, I felt how much love and care was put into these systems. First things first, there is no XP to game. You go in as strong as you were in the main menu, and you don't have your skills locked off as well. In New Gundam Breaker, not only were your skills locked off until you got enough XP to unlock them, but they were also on cooldowns. In Gundam Breaker 3, you only have cooldowns, and your skills are attached to your parts as well, but in this game, there's a twist. In New Gundam Breaker, your gunpla could only perform the skills that you applied, but in Gundam Breaker 3, if your gunpla parts are naturally equipped with weapons by default, you can use them. Shin Musha Gundam has all of these sweet weapons on its back, and you can use every single one of them in a combo, and using them is no different from using an item. Another thing about weapon skills is that you can level up each individual part. So if you're using a weapon a lot, you'll get a bunch of weapon skills from it, and if you want to switch to another weapon of that same type, you can keep all of those skills equipped and not lose any stats from the weapon switch. And all of that is before you even move! As soon as you lock on, it is much more focused on one target. But the lock on area is much more forgiving with switching targets. If there are multiple targets in your lock on area, the cursor will switch to them and your area will stay put, allowing you to attack whoever you want without pounding your head into the pavement because the lock on stuck to a crate behind a wall or something. And crates aren't even in this game! Attacks are also able to be cancelled into your jumps and your dashes. So if you want to knock an enemy into the air and jump after them instantly, you can do that! You can even chain multiple EX skills in the air, and if you lose them and they fall to the ground, you don't have to wait for them to get back up, which was a very annoying issue in New Gundam Breaker. Another annoying as hell thing in New Gundam Breaker that I can't believe I was ever okay with, was being restricted to only holding 5 parts at a time. Now, I get it, they were trying to make it more based on your team supporting you while you deliver parts instead of it being a largely solo experience like in Gundam Breaker 3, but if you aren't playing with anyone, you're just waiting for your AI partner to stop playing hide the monkey with the rig Deus across the map and deliver the goddamn part that they picked up by accident. It's restrictive, it's artificially hindering progress, and worst of all, it wasn't like this in Gundam Breaker 3 at all. It was a much more traditional system in the sense that you had no part limit. 
and every Gunpla had the chance to drop a part from that specific Gunpla unless it's a boss fight. Then they can drop a variety of parts, including the parts attached to it. Now you may ask me, but Kenzie, how do you know what Gundams are going to spawn? In New Gundam Breaker, it was all random, but in this game, they tell you right there! Which is godlike, because if you don't want another bajillion parts from Victory Gundam, you don't have to get them. That makes the grind awful in New Gundam Breaker, but here, not so much. You have to do more collecting, but once you get enough parts, you can buy the full set for very achievable prices. Gosh, with all of this good shit in the game, you think it was perfect. And it is, motherfucker. No, 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 not quite. Let me humble this game a little bit. The mission structure is still kinda ass. The one thing I can give to New Gundam Breaker is that while its missions can get repetitive, for someone with a short attention span at least, those missions will at least keep them occupied. In Gundam Breaker 3, there's none of that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't like Hack and Slash or Gundam, you are very likely to get bored with just killing things. Gundam Breaker 3 really hopes that you get swept up in the grind, because once you get past all of the perfection, it gets rather thin. Now, if you do like it, however, these problems just kinda go away. But only being able to choose between kill a bunch of Gunpla, or kill a bunch of Gunpla so you can kill their Nexus, or kill a bunch of Gunpla so you can kill the Big Daddy Gunpla, makes it really easy to take breaks. In short bursts of grinding, Gundam Breaker 3 is probably at its strongest, but in a marathon, it could probably do the opposite to someone and turn someone away from the lack of variety. And while I hope that doesn't happen for those that hear that this game is amazing and the definitive Gunpla experience, it's very possible. I wasn't expecting to have to shut off my brain, but button mashing does have that effect on me sometimes. It's still a blast whenever I go back to it, but... Those times, unfortunately, are finite. So, with all that being said, how do I feel about this game? Playing it right after New Gundam Breaker, I thought it was unreal that they would make some of the changes that they made, but the mission structure and the sheer repetitiveness of the combat in long bursts can grind on the patience of some, I'm sure. But let's get to the skinny of it. Is this game better than New Gundam Breaker? Absolutely. Gundam Breaker 3 costs just about 50 bucks for the break edition, and it is the most complete package that you can ask for out of both of these games. The combat is a vast downgrade in New Gundam Breaker, and the change was so stark in the presentation, mechanics, and overall style that I didn't even feel like New Gundam Breaker deserved to be in this series at all. It feels like an entirely different type of game, a game made by somebody who didn't even know how to hold Gundam Breaker's jock. However, if you don't want to drop the full price for an import, settling for New Gundam Breaker isn't really shortchanging yourself either. It goes for about 15 bucks at your local GameStop or EB Games or hell, check out a mom and pop shop and see if you can get it there. Because for that low price, you are getting a Gunpla battle experience that is fun in its own way. And that's okay, you know. I guarantee that if you can get past the mediocrity of this game, you can at least get your 15 bucks worth making a couple of Gundams and meeting these wonderful ladies. But if you do get Gundam Breaker 3, be prepared to play it for a long time. Because the longevity of it and the potential to play it is undeniable. I feel like it was made with player's choice in mind, and it respected the time I spent with it every single time. 